Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Maggie, if you're new here. I run this channel and this business with my brother John. Today I'm gonna to be covering a topic that I feel like we get questions on quite a lot, and it's how to review a practice exam or any kind of set of MCAT questions that you're taking. This is such an important skill, and if you've ever looked at anything me and John have ever done, our free program, anything like that, you'll know that we constantly tell you guys to review every question that you're taking. And we actually recommend that if you take a practice exam one day, that you review it the next day, all in one day. And I know that that seems like an insurmountable task, but I think that there's one big reason why students fail to do this, and it's that they are simply not good enough at figuring out why they got a question wrong. Secondarily, they also also might not know what to do about it once they find out why they got that question wrong. So today I'm going to be kind of covering both of those things. So I'm going to talk about it in depth a little bit and then I'm going to go and show you an example of a, just a question I ripped from one of the free exams on AAMC and how I would review that question. So first things first, I said students don't know and they're not good enough at figuring out why they got a question incorrect. Generally there's like three reasons why you got a question incorrect. One, the first one is you did not understand what the question was asking when you came across it in the first place. If you don't know what the question is asking, you obviously can't answer it to the best of your ability. I'll go over what that would look like later. The second mistake is that they missed some key information in the passage. So if you get to the question and you understand what it's talking about, but you have to have some information from the passage that you just didn't remember was in there or you didn't glean from the passage, then obviously you're not going to be able to answer that question either. The third problem is content. So you can perfectly simplify the question stem. You could have read the passage in depth, understood what it's saying, but if you get down to like a very simple basic science question and you just don't know the answer to the question, that's probably a content gap. So that's my three reasons why you can get questions wrong. Notice I did not say silly mistake. I know for a fact that silly mistakes happen, but a lot of things feel like silly mistakes when you are reviewing a full length test because you are now looking at the correct answer and you're now looking at what the AMC or whoever said was the explanation behind why that answer choice is right and it makes sense to you. So you're like, oh, okay, like, now that I know that information, like that was clearly just a silly mistake. I'm not that person anymore that I was when I answered that question. And I just think that it is a really easy cop out to say that you're getting questions wrong because of silly mistakes. So I encourage you not to do that. Silly mistakes do not teach us anything. If we get a question wrong because of some stupid thing that we did, that teaches us nothing. But if we get a question wrong because we couldn't simplify the question well enough, or we didn't catch something in the passage, or it was a content gap, that's things that we can solve. That's problems we can solve. So let's look at a passage together or a question together to kind of characterize like how I would go through this and sort the question out into, oh, I just didn't understand the question or it was a passage or it was a content gap and then what I would do to try and fix that problem. So this is passage one of the CP section of the AAMC free practice exam. I think that's like the FLE5. It's the new one, the scored one. So if you haven't done this passage, it's gonna be a little bit of a spoiler alert, but if you want to read the passage, you can read it right here, right now. Just pause and read. So I have question number one right here. Question number one says, what quantity of compound one, which is this right here, must be provided to prepare 100 milliliters of solution with a concentration equal to Ki? So I hope you guys read the passage, honestly, because this is impossible to do unless you read the passage. So if I was going through and reviewing this question after I took it, and let's say I got it wrong, the first thing I'm gonna ask myself is, did I understand what the question was asking of me? Because if you've done this question or if you've read it or thought about it, this is really not that bad of a question but it's asked in kind of a convoluted way, which is the MCAT special. So there's a lot of mistakes that could be made here in not understanding the question. And if you're reviewing this in a timely manner, so you should be reviewing things in within a couple days of when you took those questions, then you should kind of remember how you felt after you read this question. Were you confused or did you know exactly how to tackle it? If you were confused, then you need to simplify the question stem. This is a strategy me and John talk about all the time. This is not just our strategy. Like this is just a good test taking strategy that anyone can use at any time in their life. What simplifying the question stem would look like is to say, okay, they're asking me about compound one. Okay, that's this protease thing that I read about up in the passage. They're asking me about a quantity of compound one. So what quantity of compound one? And I noticed down here my answer choice, they're all in milligrams, okay, that's interesting. So basically how many milligrams of compound one 
must be provided in order to get 100 milliliters of solution. So there we are, we have another number, 100 milliliters, with a concentration equal to Ki. And if you read the passage and you understood it, then you know that Ki is this dissociation constant, blah, blah, blah. But basically, this is the more important part, that we know that the Ki is equal to 60.3 micromolar. So the concentration they're talking about is 60.3 micromolar, which is also 60.3 micromoles per liter. So now to break down this question even further, if you're still not understanding it, it's basically saying to get this concentration with this amount of liquid, how many milligrams of compound one must I put in there? And now you can set up just a dimensional analysis, mark out some units, end up with a milligram, and you're probably gonna get this question right. I'll show you how to set it up. So I've written out the dimensional analysis below, and I know that there's a lot of things that I could have like made simpler and easier, especially stuff right, right here, I could have combined those, but I just wanted to show every step of the calculation so that you could clearly see that I'm getting rid of my liters here, getting rid of my milliliters here, et cetera, et cetera. And you end up with answer choice D. So that's how you would simplify the question stem. And if you weren't able to get to the fact that this was a math question and you just had to basically use units and use dimensional analysis and get it down to saying you have to have 2.92 milligrams worth of compound one to get 60.3 micromolar if you have 100 milliliters of solution, then you probably had a problem with simplifying the question stem. And what you need to do to rectify that is to do exactly what I just did and simplify this question. These are gonna be like the ones that, that take the longest amount of time to review because now you have to sit down and with the knowledge of what the correct answer is, you have to work backwards to see well, how was I supposed to understand that the question was asking that? So that's simplifying the question stem. It is a strategy that me and John love. We talk about it all the time. And that's what you're supposed to do if you were not able to get down to what this question was asking. If you got to the end of this question and you were like, I had no clue what it's saying, work on simplifying the question stem with this question that you just missed. Don't let a question go, don't leave a stone unturned, basically. The second problem that can happen that we talked about was not getting something in the passage. So there's a couple things that you had to glean from the passage uh, to get this question right. One of them was Ki. It specifically mentioned the number right here, and if it had asked anything about the content of what Ki is, then you would have to see this sentence right here, which talked about how it's a dissociation constant for the enzyme inhibitor. Another very important thing that was necessary was this molar mass right here. Um, that it talked about compound one having that molar mass. You had to pick up on that to get that question right. So if you are missing things within the passage, if you're not good at active reading within these science passages, you need to flow chart. This is probably going to be the quickest thing because I don't think that it's a huge, huge deal. If I got to the end of this passage and I just didn't see that this molar mass thing was right here and I was like, I don't know how to get the molar mass. I can't, it, there's no way I can calculate molar mass out of all this stuff. So I'm just gonna pick one and move on. Like, yes, that's a problem. But I think that that's one of those things that you need to take into your next passage. The very next passage you read, you need to be working on your flow charting. Maybe you even need to go back to where you're not timing a passage, you were just doing your best to flow chart. And we have videos on how to flow chart. We do it all the time in all of our science passage breakdowns. And we also have a video on our strategies playlist of actually what flow charting is and how to do it. I would definitely recommend giving that a watch and giving all of our strategy videos a watch to be real. But flow charting is absolutely going to help you pick up on these things in the passage and then you will start to understand that when you come across a molar mass like that's like this in the passage, you're going to use it in a question, like almost 100% of the time. They're not just giving you that for S's and G's. So you might as well go ahead and highlight it within the passage, which is exactly what we tell you to do in the flow charting method. So to recap that second one, if you got to this question and you kind of understood what it was saying, but you felt like you had missing information and the information ended up being something in the passage, you need to flow chart. You need to have more active reading within the passage, which is essentially what flow charting helps you do. The last one is a content gap. And that's not very relevant for this question that I chose right here. But like the, the very, the second one in this passage, the question number two asked something about, it was like basically explained some principle that the passage gave an example for. And then it was like, this is an example of blank, 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 or blank. And it was like four different theories in science and the answer was Le Chatelier's principle. But like, that's a thing, like if you just got to that question and you just didn't know what Le Chatelier's principle is, first off, shame on you, just kidding. But Le Chatelier's principle is very important. But if you just didn't know like what those theories were and that's just a content gap, you understood what the question was asking, you understood everything in the passage and you just didn't know the answer to the question, 
That's a content gap. Make a card for it, whether, whether that's Anki or Quizlet or whatever. Paper, flashcards, doesn't matter. Just make sure that you know that the next time you take practice questions because there's nothing more frustrating than getting a question wrong about a content gap and then the next time you see a question on that, getting it wrong again. You're probably going to do that. I know I do it all the time and it's very frustrating, but the best way to kind of guard against that is to just make a flashcard and just hit your brain with that information all the time. You will eventually get to where you can apply that to the actual question. So to recap, if you get to the end of a question, you're reviewing, okay? And you remember that when you got to the end of the question, you have no clue what this question's asking. You need to work on simplifying the question stem and do it right then and there with that question. Secondly, if you got to this question and you kind of understood what it was saying, but you felt like you had missing information and that information ended up being in the passage, you need to work on your active reading and your flow charting. That's something that you can either go back if you have time and flow chart this passage that you got the question wrong in, or you could just do it next time, the very next practice passage that you take. Just make sure that you're flow charting and that you know what that means and that you know what you're trying to get out of that passage. And thirdly, if you just have a content gap, have to do that flashcard. Easy peasy. You should have your flashcard app up and running while you're reviewing so that you can just be like, oh, I, d I didn't know Le Chatelier's principle was that. Let me just type that into a flashcard. Okay, I made a flashcard. I'll look at it later. Go on to the next question. If you follow these rules through, you will be able to go through a practice MCAT reviewing it in a day. It's going to take probably just as long or longer than it took for you to take that practice exam, which is really frustrating, but you're going to come out of that knowing so much more than you did before and you're going to have points where you can improve the next time you take practice questions. And I will give you one more piece of advice before I go. I kind of belabored the point I think a bit about how students will a lot of times say that everything is just a silly mistake and they'll blame everything on that and I'm telling you right now do not do that. The last mistake I see uh, students making is blaming everything on a content gap. Like really and truly like true content gaps, especially if you're like in your final month where you're really taking a lot of practice passages and reviewing them and everything, it's probably gonna be like few and far between. And you don't, like you're going to see things on your real MCAT that you don't truly know that content fully. But a lot of times, if you can simplify the question and you can flowchart and you can get things that you need from the passage, you can get to the right answer. So I'm telling y'all, don't blame it on a content gap. You don't have to know some specific thing about this HIV medication. It's probably just asking you about enzyme kinetics. It's probably just asking you about Le Chatelier's principle. Like it's probably just asking you about these basic science concepts and you're not actually understanding that the question is asking that. You're just blaming it on that it's using this HIV medication to talk about enzyme kinetics. And so you think you have to know something about this HIV medication, but what you really need to do is understand that it's asking about enzyme kinetics and then apply your knowledge of that. Okay guys, I think that's it. I hope I didn't come across as too aggressive in this, but it's it's a very important skill that I'm just trying to impart some wisdom on, wisdom on how to review things because it is going to carry you so far. You have to take standardized tests all the time in medical school and in residency. Like you have to take step three in residency. So like get used to taking practice questions and reviewing them. If you have any questions, leave them down below. Make sure to check out our free program on our website and anything else that we have in the description below. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.